This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. How are you guys doing today? Thank you so much for coming out to the Mark 5 release! Oh my god, I cannot begin to tell you how jazzed I am! So thank you to each and every one of you that are here, that are tuned into the live stream for letting us live this dream. I'm on cloud nine right now. Um, so real quick before we get into it, I, I do want to put out a huge thanks to the awesome Hack 5 team that has made this happen, as well as all of our spouses and significant others that have put up with us for the last six months. Yeah. So, so this guy, uh, uh, 80, you just saw him, he, uh, he kind of taught us this thing at, uh, I guess it was DerbyCon, mm -hmm. and that is, um, well, first, you drink all the booze, and then you hack all the things. Yeah, but so in order to help you guys facilitating the drink all the booze thing, what we need are uh, three words. Two, we say one. these words, two words. One. Okay, let's go with two. We say these two words we have to drink. Can I, can I get a word? Anybody yell out a word? Okay. Thanks. All right, we're gonna go with dongs. No. Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're going with Wi-Fi. Cheers. And uh, and and pineapple. We're not gonna make it through this deck. All right. Well, without further ado, uh, this right here is Seb. Hey guys. Uh, and as everyone knows, that's Darren. I'm Darren. And, uh, and together we have joined powers to make epic pineapple awesomeness. Uh, everybody, of course, on the stream in here should know, but if you don't, the Wi-Fi pineapple, basically, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot honeypot. It's kind of a man-in-the-middle tool. It's a pen test pivot box. It can do so many things, but basically, small and expensive box that you can deploy anywhere, manage anywhere, totally useful on your hacking, pen test engagement, fun stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and our... Basically, what we believe in, our core values, is that we want to make easy to use, affordable and expandable hacker gear, pen test gear, hardware. It's the physical manifestation of hacking. You can just drop it anywhere and, and get your ownage on. Uh, and those are, have been our core principles since the very beginning of this project. Of course, today we're introducing the Mark V. And this is, of course, based on five years of feedback. In fact, just over a month ago, uh, September 7, 2008, was the pineapple's five-year birthday. I know, the Mark I was born. In fact, hang on. Uh, oh. oh, what? Oh, man, we have, we have boots now. Ah, das boot. Well, there we go. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, this guy. So this is the new pineapple? Yeah, so we, we, we thought of a new design, you know, that's... that's we what think you guys are like. going to love it. It scrolls oh, like yeah. butter. But in reality, I mean, as we've seen the landscape change over the last five years with this Epic tool, it really comes down to the current generation, the Mark IV, that totally changed everything because of the new intuitive user interface. We've got the modular infusions. I mean, yeah. Seb, you freaking came in out of nowhere. I guess out of Germany and saved me from myself that's and my really bad PHP code <laughs> and kind of like blew it into orbit like C64. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, well, we, so we introduced the new web interface and kind of, you know, one of the biggest, I think, uh, revolutions of the pineapple was uh, having a modular kind of. I'm sorry, I'll talk to the mic more. Uh, so to have this modular interface really. Drink. Oh, God. Sorry. All right, Prost. Mm. There we go. So the. Uh, yeah. That is a boot, yeah. Um, so no, really. Uh, the the whole one of the biggest things was the the modules that were introduced for the the Mark IV. Yes, and Mark IV. Uh, <laughs> fear, fear. Mark IV, yes, fear. that's the one. Not not the, the not, not the, the fumf. Not not the yeah. Um, no, so so, uh, uh, so we introduced these infusions or modules, and uh, that that really helped uh, get community involved in the development. And I guess we we got a lot of feedback from there a lot of people just starting to you know code out things that we wouldn't you know what weren't able to offer out of the box right before right we had no idea what was going to happen when we opened it up and threw in an api and you know people started hacking at it exactly. and it just got yeah. crazy well so community development actually got expanded there uh also the fact that we have usb the first time and, and a device kind of allowed the possibility of a second wi-fi interface uh more storage so therefore installing things uh extra programs logging and so on so that's, that's all great. So we got far with that. Yeah, and it introduced an amazingness is what it did. And like suddenly, you know, people are writing things like SSL strip and deauth attacks and beacon attacks. We got URL snarf yeah. on there. 
uh, man in the middle injection tools. We've got uh, site surveys, TCP dump. I mean, you can even control your pineapple over text, over text message. messages. Yeah, exactly. So is that two or one? All right, well, I'm three in now, so here we go. But yeah, that's, that's basically what happened. And so through all of that, basically what happened was we kind of got a little too big for our britches. I don't know if you realized. Um, uh, just, just a bit. So we started looking at, I mean, as, I mean if, naming it the Mark II and three, and just kind of like, you know, says, hey, we're going to make new stuff all new the time. New things are coming all the time, yeah. Totally, totally. So this one we're launching today is going to be obsolete in six weeks, but it's cool. Get it anyway. Um, <laughs> But so we started actually Wait, looking. The Mark 8's coming out, coming out. Yeah. So, next month? What yeah, was it? Next yeah. so we started looking at uh, some possible hardware opportunities, and honestly, there's nothing else out. There's nothing on the landscape right now that serves this really unique need of the hacker and the pen tester. And to be honest, this is all Seb's fault because had he not come in here and saved me from my horrible PHP code and enabled us to be able to do awesome things with that USB and to be able to do awesome things with that framework and those modular, uh, you know, the modular design and those uh, over the air uptips and all that stuff, we wouldn't be having this conversation. No. So the conversation we did have was, well, hey, what if we could make our own? And really, so we did. We did. So we asked ourselves, what is it that we want in a Wi-Fi pineapple? More USBs. No, 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 no. We don't want more no, USB. No, We're going to have a really? rat's nest of cables. It's going to look nasty. Aww, listen, but, but we need storage and we need, you know. Yeah, I know. We need all those things. But listen, it's, I understand that it's a hacker device, but that's no reason why it can't be elegant and beautiful. Yeah. Got a so the things we actually want are, you're right, storage. Yeah. We want to log stuff. We want to install stuff. There's tons of packages and infusions that can take advantage of this. You know, it's embedded Linux. Let's okay. go. We want radios. We want to do advanced attacks. You know, and we want to stick to our core values of making it dead simple to deploy those attacks. Of course, I'm not discounting USB. We definitely want USB. We want a solid USB because we got those, you know, 3G, 4G modems. We get Android tethering and all of that, of course, out of the box. Sure. We also want versatile power, you know. I would say we've had so many issues with Mark IV in regards to power and power you know, is was, a tricky issue and we learned so much and I am so proud that we were able to do versatile power because I would say being able to power the Mark IV off of USB was huge. Now oh, it wasn't yeah, yeah. always as stable as I would hope, but it was huge in that it was convenient. Uh, we also want it to be unbrickable. Yeah, and we've. Again, this is a problem we've had in the past. Even though we've put many safeguards in there, your power failures, whatsoever. Wi-Fi. <laughs> I got thirsty. Yep. Thanks. Um, yeah, no. So we, we we did have huge issues in regarding to breaking. Uh, well, not huge, but but people did break their devices, and it was hard to recover without serial cable or a UART cable in that case. Um, and so speaking of serial, we also want to make it totally expandable because as we've seen, Absolutely. you know, with the opportunities that USB provided with the Mark IV and with, of course, the software with the new APIs and whatnot, it has totally grown. And so we want to stick to that core value. So here's the thing. Feature wise, the Mark V, we are building it on our proven platform. We said this with the Mark IV, the AR9331 is beginning of life it has got some legs it's got some gams so let me tell you it's a great yeah, platform yeah, yeah. and so we are building on the ar9331 but we're not stopping there because we're going to add the infamous in fact an unlocked realtek rtl 8187 a lot of people call it an alpha it's yeah. an amazing radio it's high gain uh we've got uh it's professional. I mean, yeah. we've got SMA connectors on this thing. None of that RPSMA stuff. This is like, so you can put those Stable professional yeah, yeah. Uh, antennas on this. And uh, it really just, you know, this is, it's just a fantastic chip. Absolutely. Yep. So we decided to go with those. And let me tell you, in fact, even beginning this whole adventure of custom hardware, there were some fun lessons to learn. We can talk about RF uh, diversity. P putting, and putting two of these devices on one board is a pain. The FCC process. had a lot of fun trying to figure out what to do with us, but we've got it, we, so we, we're good. We're through, so yes. hey. <laughs> we love the only ones in the world, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so storage-wise, we absolutely want storage. Right, so what's the easiest way to expand storage on a device? Uh, microSD, maybe even, you know, onboard microSD? 
Yeah, yeah. and so we've actually included a two gig micro SD card with every, every pineapple, unit, yeah. and what this allows us to do. 80, I did not realize I would forget the word so quickly. I'm expecting cause to run up way here with the Red Bull and vodka any moment. All right, but, uh, but yeah, adding, uh, having that uh, SD card shipped from us allows us to actually make sure that the hottest, the latest and greatest firmware, the freshest pick pineapple Absolutely. ships out the door. Damn it. I think I just- can I, can I just not? Because I remember the words. <laughs> yeah, just do. It's gonna be a quiz later. Um, and so in that, We've uh, included the two gig, but we are expandable up to 32 and we're supporting FAT and EXT. This will allow you to uh, install tons of applications and even do tons of swap. Because sadly, a lot of you guys do use Windows, which scares me, but you know, if you want to, then go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's Adobe. I'm not even gonna go down that rat hole. Oh, yeah. All right, so dead simple, okay? That is a core pillar of ours. We've always wanted to make this super easy for anybody to pick up and use. You know, there's all of sure. these awesome command line tools, but we don't want you to necessarily even have to drop into the command line. And so Sabbath has done an amazing job, and our community has done an amazing job of making these infusions that like take these complex tools and really simplify them in a web interface that anybody can you know, just like, you know, click the button and it goes. But yep. what's easier than clicking the button? Flipping the switch, right? So let's put some dip switches on it. And what we've done is introduced attack boot modes. Basically, we've got five dip switches on there, three of them are user configurable and allow you to specify what it is that you want the pineapple to do. So you flip those switches, we're gonna rename the product. So um, let me tell you about the, the Wi-Fi coconut. coconut. <laughs> uh, did I say Wi-Fi? Wireless coconut. So the, um, the IEEE 802.11 coconut, <clears throat> Now has dip switches where you can flip these <laughs> to choose your attack mode. You turn it on. It we're calling it. It does the thing. Yeah. So so our devices now do the thing. Also, props um, to Colleen. <laughs> yes. Thank okay. You. Uh, the other things like we mentioned, we're not getting rid of USB. We love USB. Um, and moreover, we love solid USB. And we will uh, will allude. To, we'll talk about the live stream that we're doing next week uh, yeah, at the, uh, yeah, later. Yeah, we'll but basically, we'll get into the Q and A about this and get into the all the esoteric, gory details about the AR9331 and all of the fun Buns USB stuff in there. Yeah. But no, what we've done is we have solved a lot of these issues and made a very reliable USB stack. We've implemented it in such a way where I have 3G dongles running for days. days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As well as the power issue, uh, we wanted a very versatile and very robust power supply. So we still continue to accept 5 volt as well as 12 volt, and Absolutely. we're shipping already with international uh, AC, so great for us DC. Europeans, right? Yes, we can actually use the charge. Absolutely. That comes from no, but the whole power supply issue was was one before. Did we? No. Okay. No, no, we're not. But I'm I'm preparing <laughs> okay, to. Right. Wi-Fi. Uh, so, so the the. the <laughs> uh oh. So the. Oh, you wanted something else. Oh, we, we, we love you, Carl. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you. I hear it still gives me wings. <laughs> Woo! No, so uh, so a lot of you guys watching on the live stream probably here too. Uh, you guys have had issues powering multiple devices, you know, on um, on the Mark IV while plugging into your laptop or any other five volt power source over USB. Uh, we don't have that issue anymore with the onboard uh, Realtek and Atheros. They are not going to have the same issues. The they don't go thing. down. They don't, yes. you know, have, have, but they just, they just do the thing. Put it on the board yeah. already. Exactly. Yes. We also wanted it to be unbrickable. And I think we did a Budding entrepreneurs, startups, and innovators are all turning their ideas into realities backed by the strength of a .NET domain. And you guys know .NETs are globally known. They're one of the most popular domain extensions online. They inject your business with instant credibility, and you can immediately discover the benefits of building your presence around a .NET domain. See, if you already have a .com, well, then you can get the corresponding .NET and protect your brand. You know, if the .com you want is already taken, well, the .NET is a perfect alternative. And if you'd like one, you can get them the same place Shannon and I do over at domain.com. We love shopping with them. They're so easy to use, reliable, affordable. You can tweet them at domain.com. Makes it really fun to do business with them. They're only $8.99 a year for .NETs, but get this, they get even better because the guys over at domain.com are huge fans of ours and they want to hook you up with 15% off 
They're already affordable domain names and web hosting. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at domain.com's checkout. That's 15% and big savings, so don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com.